Kalen DeBoer look compared to what it was under not just the coordinators, but the head coach, Nick Saban, for the last decade and a half? Well, philosophically, they're very similar. Actually, there was a moment in the offseason leading into 2023. DeBoer does have a returning quarterback and Jalen Milrow who finished fifth in the Heisman Trophy voting. After a slow start to 2023, Milrow finished with an outstanding campaign. Here's Jam Miller, great run on the first play. Big hit on the sideline by Malachi Moore is changing positions on that back end this year for Bama. Malachi Moore will get to him a lot. He's so important. Chase McClellan, Roydell Williams were running backs in the fall. So a new group back there, Milrow in trouble. And this is what he does so well. We saw this a ton last year. He rushed for 12 touchdowns. And obviously improved as a passer, but very dangerous when he gets outside the pocket. Maybe the first observation there of the difference between the Nick Saban-led program and the Kalen DeBoer-led program, that probably would have been whistled a sack with Nick Saban being a defensive guy. However, with Kalen, hey, let him play a little bit. Kalen takes off, and we're really proud of how he's really taken on leadership role in the offense and growing into this system. Now it's second down and short. I'm going to run it again. And it's a first down for Miller. But after the bye week, man, he became so decisive and played as well as anybody at quarterback in the country down the stretch. Milrow throwing a deep ball here. And a contested catch made by Jeremy Bernard, transfer from Washington. And a great catch there by Jeremy Bernard. Down the seam, knew he was going to get hit, went up high, made a great catch. Justice Haynes gets the call here into the end zone for the touchdown. Justice Haynes. Haynes only had 25 carries a year ago, but he and Jan Miller will split duties at tailback for Bama in the fall. Alabama has to replace Will Reichert, the all-time leading scorer in the history of the NCAA. Connor Talty, Upton Belafonte, and this young man here, Reed Shoeback, are in competition for the place-picking job. And the Shoeback puts it through, make it 7-0. Now Ty Simpson is in at running back. He's the number two. And some pressure in his face, and he throws it away. Red Morgan, the guy that they really like. On the back end, youngster got the pressure that time on Simpson, Richard sophomore quarterback who played a handful of games last year through just 20 passes. He was a big time recruit a couple years ago out of Tennessee. And yeah, they're really excited about his progress. They feel like he's much more confident player, has great feel for what they're trying to do offensively, and is very accurate when releasing the ball, especially outside the numbers. They got Richard Young at running back. Able to push the pile out to about the 29. Downhill physical runner for Alabama. Young is their third running back on the depth chart. Had nine carries a year ago. Third down at six. Simpson with time. And it's pulled in for a first down out near midfield. Cole Adams on the grab. That'll move the sticks out to the 49. We talked to offensive coordinator Nick Sheridan. He's really excited about how Cole Adams is going to be factored in. Here's Young able to break a tackle in the hole. And able to slip an ankle tackle attempt at the 45. Gets nine down to the 42-yard line. Simpson going to hand it off again. And good job in the backfield against true freshman Daniel Hill. Damian Brown, another young, talented player on the back end, a freshman from Santa Ana, California. Coaches said he's been as exciting as anybody on defense for Alabama here in the spring. First down on the 40. Play fake. Simpson with pressure, steps up, gets out of there. Launches it downfield, and it was intercepted, but inbounds are not waiting for the call. Nope, incomplete. Ray Hubbard was there 
on defense to pick it off but could not get a foot down. Simpson showing some athletic ability there. It's interesting you saw the bio there for Sheridan. A ton of coaches on this staff as Simpson is down to the 36. Does he trust these guys to take over a program like this and having worked with them before, felt very confident all the guys he brought in. Simpson's pass high and incomplete. But the structure that was here under Nick Saban remains in terms of the resources, strength and conditioning, the training staff, as good as any in the country. And so you have that surrounded with coaches you're familiar with. And obviously we've spent time with Kalen DeBoer, whether it was at Washington or here, and he's such, so easy to get along with, so amiable with his coaching staff and members of the front office staff that seems like he can get along with just about anybody. He's a great, great person and a guy that everyone in Tuscaloosa has really enjoyed getting to know. And I look forward fans to kind of get to know him a little more as the summer progresses. So fourth down. Simpson from the pocket, unloads in traffic, and it's caught for a first down at the 26-yard line. Daniel Lewis, one of four tight ends. Pulling it back, Simpson, and then dumping it off. Nice catch by Hill out of the backfield. Big athletic, true freshman. He's 230 pounds. He's from Mississippi. And he picks up about eight. Another nice play by Ty Simpson here this year than he did at any point last year in the spring or in fall. Here's Hill again, this time with the carry. Push back at the line to game. We'll see where they spot it. It's going to be third down. DeBoer, 49 years old. He's a native of South Dakota. He played at Sioux Falls, was a four-year player there. Then a head coach at Sioux Falls for bouncing around to different jobs as an offensive coordinator, whether in Eastern Michigan or Indiana. Then he got the head job at Fresno State. After two years there, took the Washington job as Young gets the first down, moving the chains inside the 15. Simpson going to hand it off here in a jet sweep inside the 10 to Adams and pushed out of bounds around the seven yard line. Whether it's played on the moon or played here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, ball is ball and he knows how to get the most out of his guys. Here's a pitch to Young. And Young able to power through an arm tackle into the end zone for a touchdown. Nice run. Richard, freshman Richard Young. Not afraid of contact downhill. <laughs> I tell you what, I mean, Richard Young, it's obvious who the one and twos are at running back with what we've already seen from Jam Miller. Upton Bellenfont will get a place kicker here for this extra point. Well, on that drive, Simpson was three of six passing for 37 yards. Former Alabama head coach and legend, Coach Saban, thank you so much for taking the time. Coach, how strange is it for you to be out here without your whistle on? Well, you know what? It was good to come back today. I got to talk to the team and congratulate them on last year's SEC championship. And, you know, we honored Jim Wilson today, who was a board of trustee who did a great job for the university. And, you know, we put our captain's hand and footprint in the dirt. So um, all those things are great traditions, and it's good to be back and be a part of it. Are you going to be able to watch and enjoy as a fan? Are you going to be writing down some coaches' notes while you're up in the box watching? What are you going to be doing? My, my, my biggest concern is being with um, my head coach, Miss Terry. <laughs> I, I, I've never, ever had to watch a game with her. So I'm a little concerned. Well, last question, Coach. Why is this team in the right hands with Kalen DeBoer for the future? Yeah, well, Kalen's a great coach, and I know there's been some disruptions uh, based on, you know, me leaving him coming, but uh, he's going to do a great job. The players are in good hands, and I think they'll do a great job of recruiting and probably need to get some guys out of the portal like everybody else at this time of year, but I I'm excited for the future. All right. Thank you, Coach. Enjoy the game with Miss Terry. Thank you. Okay, first, now, he, he one time was your coach. Now he's a colleague. <laughs> College game day. Right. How do you think he's going to handle this new chapter of his life? Uh, I'm excited for him. I mean, it's hard to, to quit football cold turkey. You know, so to know that he's going to have that outlet and still be very involved in the game is tremendous, and we're better at ESPN to have him as a teammate, that's for sure.
Bill Rowe off play action. Lobbing it. And maybe a little push off. Inside the 20 is Bernard. And Bernard inside the five and finally dragged down at the two yard line by Damani Jackson as they're going ones versus ones. So first and goal from the two. Bill Rowe, two and two passing so far. Going to hand it off here. Justice Haynes. That at the one and spill. Jamarius Latham was there for Alabama along with LT Overton. Keon Sab, who is a transfer from Michigan. Very gifted safety. And they're also. Big Robbie Hoot's coming in now. 270-pound tight end lined up in the H-back spot. It's a handful in the run game, so I'd anticipate a run right behind him. Look at you calling plays in the spring game. You have a future in this business. <laughs> touchdown for Jim Miller. And a touchdown catch in the SEC title game. Punches it in here. Just a little bit of a split zone right here. And that offensive line up front. Connor Talty with the extra point. That will help with the return of Jaheim Otis, who's not available today. Dylan Lonergan in at quarterback, completes it out to the 30. C.J. Dupree at tight end, gain of five. Let's go ahead and check in with Molly downfield. Well, Dave, you guys have talked about the coaching change and culture change here. Well, offensive lineman Tyler Booker summed it up perfectly. He said, Coach Saban expected greatness out of you, whereas Coach DeBoer appreciates the greatness in you. And you can tell the players truly love Coach DeBoer, those who stayed. Everyone still does the same role, but as far as walking on eggshells, there's a lot less of that for sure. Big guys are empowered and trusted. And He's adopted the things that he believes in while implementing some of his own. And it's been a really nice marriage so far. Lonergan off play action, just throwing it away with pressure in his face that time from Brett Morgan. And all the coaches, not just Kalen, told us yesterday in our meetings that Nick Saban continues to be receptive to any way he can help better the next stage of this program. And I think that's so valuable, too. I mean, you have the greatest that has ever done it, ever, at the college level. And you have him. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, except for the four hours a day he's on the golf course. So 20 hours a day, seven days a week, to be able to reach out because he said and made it very, very important. And I, it actually rings home to me as an alumnus. It, this is this is sure, yeah, it's my program. Yeah, it's 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 mine, I guess, but it's it's really our program collectively. Coach Saban, you, Greg, everyone that's been here that's helped build this thing, this is everyone's program. I want everyone to have a, a part of it. So I think that's really, really important and valuable and I think refreshing, frankly, because I don't think there's a lot of coaches that would drop their ego at the door and say, yeah, the way Coach Saban did is really good too, so I'm going to do a lot of the things he did to maintain the success that this place has had for so many years. No third down and eight. Dylan Lonergan. Richard freshman played just one game last year. Through two passes, see the arm talent there. That was a bullet to Cole Adams. Wrapped up though just short of the first down, so fourth and a yard. It's like, again, a little nod to the offense. One guy down here says first and 10. The guy up top said fourth and one. But being offensive head coach, I'm thinking first and ten. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> a chain game moved. <laughs> as soon as Kalen said, let's go, fresh set of downs. It's pretty amazing seeing a lot of formations, seeing a lot of different coverages defensively. I mean, this is a little more than you usually see in a spring game. They said they weren't going to show anything, but this is the base stuff. They got a lot of stuff. Catches made out in space by Robbie Oots. Had three catches last year. Gain of six will bring up third four or third and three, depending on the spot here. Now that we haven't called his name yet, but we will, I think, in the fall a lot, is Caleb Odom, who is a versatile guy. They're trying to figure out whether he's a tight end or a receiver. They, as we mentioned earlier, really four tight ends. J.D. Gardner is the carry here for a first down. Good movement up front. It's always great to see everybody. Lonergan wearing your number here in Alabama. Manuel Henderson, uh, Henderson has a chance to do some damage in the fall. They really like him. 
Sooners. Really progressing, junior from Hartford, Alabama, gives them a first and goal. Goal spotted on the six yard line. And no running room up the middle. Daniel Hill almost ran over his quarterback as he got pushed back. Much better job there up front by the D-line, Jeremiah Beeman. Birmingham, a true freshman, was there. I think they're going to need some freshmen to really step up to kind of be reinforcements there on the interior of the defensive line. They have good players from a starting standpoint. It's just with the portal now, it's just hard to retain as many guys. You often get young quick when you go down the depth chart a bit. So the freshman stepping up is big. That pass overshot Lewis. If you look at Lonergan's number, they lost on defense. Chris Braswell, Dallas Turner is likely going to be a top 10 pick. Terry and Arnold would also be a top 10 pick, certainly a top 20. Kool-Aid McKinstry as well, likely a first round pick. Caleb Downs transferred to Ohio State. Lonergan's pass broken up, nearly picked off on the redirection by Nate Woodyard. Dupree was the intended target, now it's fourth and goal. That was a good job there by Woodyard. Ball thrown just a little bit behind the intended receiver. Lonergan tried to time it out, just left it a little bit on the back hip and allowed the defender to get an arm in there. But nice stop defensively after what was a promising drive. So Shoeback will come on for the field goal. You actually can earn points as a defense. The, the scoring for the offense is the same as it is in a regular game, so a chance of three points here. And the kick is good. From 27 yards away for Reed Shoeback. Kane Womack, after three years as the head coach at South Alabama, is the new D coordinator here in Tuscaloosa. Things have looked a certain way under Nick Saban for a long time. Greg, as you look at Womack's resume, what do you think will be the standout of this defense that's different from the previous regime? Well, in structure, they'll be very similar. I mean, 4-2-5 is kind of the, the terminology that you hear. Four defensive linemen, two linebackers, five defensive backs with the Husky position, Here we go. which used to be called the star in Nick Saban's defense, being that hybrid corner safety hybrid guy that can cover in the slot. So structure very similar, but the responsibilities are very, very different. Simpson, nice job to step up and throws a strike. Nice tackle, but Prentice able to pull it in. Now they're adjusting to more of a vision defense, which is a little bit more zone coverage with the eyes of the defender are on the quarterback, not on the guy they're covering. Huge hole here for Jan Miller inside the 20. And close to the goal line, but down at the two. And just a great run here by Jan Miller, but an excellent up front too. Left guard, Tyler Booker, All-American candidate, one of the best offensive linemen in the sport, opening up a big hole. Four carries, 75 rushing yards for Jan Miller. And a touchdown, first and goal. And Simpson out there with the first group right now. No row on the sideline. Snap was a little off. Alabama fans don't want to see that anymore. Oh, what a nice move by Ty Simpson. So they blow it dead, and it's second and goal. Miller again. See Sav just trying to grab out of his jersey to slow him down, but that's not going to work. It's another touchdown for Jan Miller. Second already. Chase McClellan, Roydell Williams were the two guys last year. Miller and Justice Haynes, the guys going forward. Long arm, battling for that left tackle spot throughout the course of summer. It's too soon to tell, but right now it's not looking good, guys. That's too bad. It's a big loss. Basically, for the most part, a new group is that pass by Austin Mack, the Washington transfer off the mark, trying to hit Sam Willoughby. They do have some guys coming in the fall that can help at the wide receiver spot. Yeah, they're very excited about the freshman Ryan Williams who will arrive on campus here in a couple weeks. The wide receiver is a position they actually feel pretty good about. It was a question mark for me coming in to the spring, but they actually feel like they're ahead of schedule at that spot, which is tremendous news for Alabama fans. 
Max pass again, a little off target. Ty Lockwood was who he was throwing it to. Justin Mbakwe is here and actually playing today, the number two overall pick. They needed some reinforcements on the defensive end in the backfield. Isaiah Bond transfer. Yeah, that's going to be a sack. Mack was hit. Jay Sean Ross back there. Defense looking a little better here with the threes. State of California. Going to run Claiborne here. Just when you take into account that there are some guys playing football the last couple of years that are 25. And as usual, a number of Crimson Tide players will be drafted in the first round. And you think it'll be Dallas Turner's name that's called first, potentially in the top 10. Dallas Turner, and then is you know, there a guy maybe on this roster that we could see down the road being the next edge great? Latest projections have J.C. Latham going 11th, and I, I assume a J.J. McCarthy swap based on what ESPN.com and Mel Kuyper think. You look at the way too early mock drafts from last spring, they were all in the first round, but to see Terry on Arnold last year really take ownership of that corner spot, take his game to the next level, it's been really rewarding to watch his development. Back in trouble, and that's going to be another sack. They have great, great speed off the edge to go along with Robinson, who's likely going to be the starter. But situationally, those guys, man, with their ability to affect the quarterback. What were your thoughts in the first half of this scrimmage? Yeah, I mean, the defense is playing pretty vanilla, you know, reason for that. So offense doing a good job of giving uh, the quarterbacks time, and, you know, they're making the throw and the catches. And so uh, that's good That's good to see. So, yeah, I mean, there's some things you can do to speed the game up for especially the quarterback. But, uh, I, you know, there's a lot of scrimmage left too. So they'll, they'll keep competing. All right, thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Dave. And the reason being they don't want to show too much defensively, right? And man, take into account too, I mean, it's funny how much coaches study the spring game, especially when there's a new staff. The starters are back out there on offense and on defense. Jam Miller gets the carry here. And Malachi Moore is massive. For him to be back switching to safety from the star position, now he's going to be kind of there in the back end, reading quarterback's eyes. This is a defense that really empowers the safety spot as well, too. So. Should be a great move for him and his future prospects. He's off the mark. Kendrick Law intended target. Keon Sab was down there. The addition of Keon Sab is enormous too. And, and Sab coming down from Michigan. And if you watch Michigan last year defensively, Sab got a little more and a little more and a little more as the season went along. So the bigger the game the more you saw Keon Sapp out there for the Wolverines defense, and they felt like he was a home run addition in the portal to get him to come down and, and to play that free safety spot. He's got great eyes, great instincts, and can really close in the football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Third down and nine for Milrow. Pressure backside, and flags are down. This will be holding. Milrow throws it away. Especially to the corner position, a position with great turnover, knowing that Terrion Arnold and Kool-Aid McKinstry are both going to go in the first round. A lot of young guys that will be stepping up. So that's a huge position, Coach, responsibility to get those young guys up to speed. And Mo Linguist has done a great job with some guys that have some real raw ability. Manuel Henderson on the catch, gain of eight. Well, Alabama fans and the rest of the college football world will get to see the Crimson Tide open the regular season on August 31st right here against Western Kentucky. New SEC. Pretty interesting when you look that up. You still got to kind of look twice, right? Do a double take. When you see Alabama, Oklahoma on the schedule at the end of November. And I think the schedule actually sets up really well for Alabama, too. You get Western Oklahoma, but I think you look at Alabama, man. I mean, they're well positioned this year, assuming some growth on the defensive side based on what we've seen today, to be right there back at the top of the SEC rankings. Richard Young gets the carry here, and maybe a yard under the current format. And obviously Florida State being the first team left out last year, they would naturally be in, but would have to play that additional game. And remember those first round games 
are played at home. So talking to some of the administration here in Tuscaloosa earlier in the day, they say, hey, you might look at the grass right now and it doesn't exactly look like Augusta National. Uh, right now it does not, that's for sure. But they are preparing with new sod and everything and a new system to better handle the environment in December in the event in which they have to host a home playoff game. So typical Alabama, three steps ahead when it comes to planning. <laughs> well, think about some of the schools that pass has dropped, like Milro threw it on target, but juggled and dropped by Jaron Hamilton. He stood in front of his teammates and said, we're seven points away from a national championship game. You can't leave when we are so close. It's something he reminds his teammates in the weight room during tough winter workouts when they're tired after a long day. He'll probably say it at some point today because the difference between a disappointment and a title berth is just seven points and he's constantly motivating them, reminding them so they can take that next step this season, guys. Usher in that new era, but to maintain the sense of player-led accountability is enormous. And that's something that Alabama's always been good at as Kendrick Law breaks free, pushed for the sideline inside the 20. That's why you come here so the guys that come here understand that they're stepping into a locker room where your best is expected every day. Mack taken off here, and they'll blow it dead around the uh, 15. Absolutely 100% supporting. Kalen DeBoer has been big in easing this transition. Ty Lockwood on the catch wrestled down about the 11 yard line. But obviously guys can leave immediately when a new head coach is hired, and that's why you had players from Alabama leave after that first window closed. Richard Young on the carry, not gonna get the first down. Going for it here on fourth down and one. Mack was trying to call timeout, the ball was snapped, and then the pass by Young picked off. What a great play by Drake Kirkpatrick Jr. They have blown it dead though before the snap. Pretty close. Penalty flag is down, but what a nice catch. <laughs> it's just Kirkpatrick. It's crazy to me. I remember Drake Kirkpatrick Jr. when he was about two years old. <laughs> Watching him as a young, as a young buck and, and now seeing him play for for the tide is pretty remarkable. Snagging that ball like his dad would as well. So I know his dad, there he is, there's Drake Kirk. It's about time somebody makes you feel old. That's been <laughs> happening to me for the last 15 years. I know. Welcome to the club. I know Drake Kirk is so proud. And Dre, a great teammate, a great player here for the Tide. There from about 2008 all the way through 2011, where he ultimately became the first round pick and, and a great player for a long time for the Bengals. Snap again, a little off the mark. Here's Bubba Hampton. Bounds short of the goal line. They'll mark him out at the one. Good work here from Mack. Richard, freshman quarterback. Oh. J.R. Gardner. Even in a spring game against your own team, that, <laughs> that hurts. That was James Smith who ate him up for a loss of a couple. So it's third down and goal after the tackle for a loss. Ball on the four. And a timeout by the offense. We'll step away. They pass Greg McElroy, Molly McGrath here in Tuscaloosa. Biggest stage yet here at Alabama for Kalen DeBoer. They try to run the ball here on third and goal. Daniel Hill going nowhere, stacked up at the line of scrimmage. The defense played much better lately after a rough go early on. Curtis Perry was in there first for the defense, so it's fourth down. They get a stop. It's another goal line stand there for the defense, though. That was big. A lot of result in three points for the offense. They had it at the one yard line there with a couple downs to go and pushing them backwards. Those last couple downs was significant. Not A and M. Whatever. Clean it close up. Close enough. Crimson Tide. <laughs> it's crimson. close enough. It's not close enough. It's crimson. <laughs> it's right in the end zone. If you forget. <laughs> All right, right over there. The SEC Network and the ESPN app. Ty Simpson. Long throw.
Kobe Prentice, you were mentioning earlier how different he looks to you so far in this game. Man, he just looks so decisive. I mean, last year there were moments, whether you was going to practice or watching him in the games or seeing him in a scrimmage or two, there was just a hesitancy that was leading to him becoming a little late and just almost kind of too cautious, you know, scared to make a mistake. Now, man, he's cutting loose, getting through his progressions quickly, he's accurate really looks like he's grown up a lot this offseason. Not much there for Miller. He got pushed back at the line of scrimmage. Deontay Lawson there first on defense. And you had Mac Jones as the backup and then eventually the starter winning a championship. Is Ty Simpson ready to be that guy should something happen to Jalen Milrow in terms of injury? Simpson flushed out of the pocket. And has a completion out to the 47. That was a strong throw moving to his left and hitting Caleb Odom. There's a player that we thought we'd be mentioning a lot. The coaching staff talked about him a lot yesterday in our meeting. 6'5", 225 pound true freshman. Odom's gonna be really important too. And Think about where the game is going. Guys that are difficult to defend have become more and more important. You think about a guy in the NFL like Christian McCaffrey that can play slot receiver all day long, but he plays running back too. So you can line up an empty, can't cover him with a linebacker, can't cover him with safety. You better put a nickel guy out there, but if you put a nickel guy out there, they'll run it down your throat. Brock Bowers at Georgia, is he a receiver? Is he a tight end? Is he a fullback? We'll hand it off to him too. Now what Georgia has now with Dylan Bell, and how he can play running back or wide receiver. Having those guys that are tweeners that can play multiple spots is significant. And Jeremy Bernard might be that guy, that Dylan Bell type guy that can play running back and wide out, but Caleb Oda might be that guy that can play tight end and wide receiver. Milrow back out there, pass a little low and a little behind. It just puts a lot of strain on the opposing defensive coordinator. All right, what do I cover this guy with? I can't cover him with the safety. I can't cover him with a linebacker. I better cover him with the cover guy. And if that cover guy's in there, he's probably not very good against the run. Milrow has missed his last four passes. Let's see what he does here in third down and 11. Good opportunity to watch the pass rush, too, against the tackles. Pocket breaking down, and Milrow on the run, and they'll blow it dead. In this passing attack, guys. Well, when you think of comps, and usually when you ask somebody for a comp, might have been a face mask there, but uh, no flag. I think that's who I would try to model my game after if I'm Jalen. Just continuing to grow, continuing to get more consistent throwing the football. I think he's taken huge strides in that area in the last 12 months. Here's Austin Mack out there, and he dumps it off to Adam Thorslin. And don't worry about trying to create the big plays. Hey, second and four is great down the distance for us as a play caller. So I think that was something that he struggled with at times early in his career. He always wanted to make the big play. So been really pleased with his progress in this new offense. It's gonna be a sack there. Austin Mack just had to get rid of it. There are three members of the defense back there. Was his willingness, starting with the LSU game, to take off. Hey, guess what? You give me a little room, I'm out of here. And you can't stop, you can't tackle the guy in the open field. But don't ignore what makes you incredibly special and that's anytime you have the ball in your hands in the open field. Moments ago we just showed a promo and it's a Michael Arino the third is the ball carrier down to the 28 for the likely first round draft picks at quarterback coming up here in a couple weeks. One of the players we showed was Michael Penix who played for Kalen DeBoer not just at Washington but at Indiana and while injuries were a big reason why you know Penix had some lean years this coaching staff did a tremendous job with Penix, you know, a couple of other injuries that led to season-ending injuries, make him more of a pocket passer and kind of change his game accordingly. And man, I mean, he took off. But yeah, I mean, that was a big part of Michael Penix's game early in his career. And then by the end, he's likely a first-round pick, in my opinion. But in sports history, just remarkable what Saban accomplished. And you think about when Nick Saban took over this program, he's got flags down. It was nearly a full stadium, and there was a pretty good showing here today for Kalen DeBoer's debut as the Alabama head coach. A lot of the fans have left now as we're in the latter stages of A-Day, but before spring games were on television, so you kind of had to come to watch.
But now, the fact that there were 60,000 here, you can still watch it in the comfort of your own home is, is pretty remarkable, man. The support for the Tide is second to none. Still trying to figure out if that was a shot at me, my age over the uh, <laughs> TV comment. But I promise you. <laughs> 72,000 is the number we're being told for uh, today. So excellent Mark. turnout. Think about that. It's yeah. a, a glorified scrimmage that 72,000 people are showing up for and lie ahead in the fall for Alabama. First team is still out there. Jam Miller getting the carry. No room there. So pushed out of bounds. One of the players you talked about earlier, Keanu Coates. Made the hit. By the end of it, you want to tear each other's heads off. So it's understandable that it's kind of progressed that way. No rope from the pocket. A strike. Short of the line to gain. But a good pickup that time. Josh Cuevas, who's a Washington transfer, got a number of guys that we've mentioned today that transferred from UW here to Tuscaloosa. Seven three and outs forced by the defense after just one in the first half. Simpson leaving the pocket and receiver wide open downfield, Bernard. Five star recruit a couple years back from Martin, Tennessee. Good pressure this time by Hill all over Ty Simpson. One of the stars so far has been Jam Miller. Didn't get used as much last year as a lot of people thought going into the season, but making his presence felt here in the spring in the first spring game under Kalen DeBoer. A couple of really nice runs and a great job too up front by the offensive line. This one in particular lies in Christian left tackle. Ford's outside of football for a long time. And how about the basketball program? As that pass is too long, looked like maybe the receiver Bubba Hampton slipped or just got tied up. Nate Oates here today, the basketball coach, just led the Crimson Tide men's team to Glendale and the Final Four. Some overtures, people pursued him, but he recommitted here and, and I'm so excited. I know. All the other Alabama fans feel the same way to see the commitment to basketball here as well and see the success and the program's having its result. But baseball hosting number one Arkansas today, a top 25 team, softball in the top 12. I mean, Greg Byrne and the athletic department across the board just doing an amazing job. It's interesting, too, the parallels of the career arcs of Nate Oates on the basketball side and Kalen DeBoer on the football side. You think a decade ago, Nate Oates was a high school coach. And then as an assistant coach, and Nate has talked about this a lot in Buffalo, he's working for Bobby Hurley, gets, gets a shot as an assistant, eventually the head coach there, then gets the Alabama job. Kalen DeBoer at a small school, several small schools, as either a head coach or as an assistant coach, gets an opportunity to be a head coach at Fresno State, two great years. Then gets a Pac-12 job, two terrific years at Washington, takes them all the way to the national title game. They went 14-1 and one last year and then gets the Alabama job and a very successful first A day for DeBoer here in Tuscaloosa. Final score, White beats the Crimson 34-28. Here's Coach Mbali. Coach, the Kalen DeBoer era at Alabama is underway. Your first scrimmage in front of fans. What do you think a highlight of today was, a positive that you saw on the field? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's the whole day. You know, it's everyone coming together. It's these guys, uh, you know, going through the last three months and um, everything you know, with the resiliency that they've been through, um, with the transition. I can't, you know, say enough about how they've embraced everything. Uh, I'm proud of them. Uh, today, some highs, some lows, some things we can get better at. Uh, I know they're starving uh, to go out there and be great, and uh, they're going to continue to put in the work. Over 72,000 fans here at one point for a glorified scrimmage. What does that tell you about how hungry this Alabama fan base is? Yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Can't thank them enough. Uh, you know, for coming out and supporting our guys. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to this uh, when it's really, you know, all packed and, uh, you know, loud and all the energy and the excitement uh, is on another level when we start the season. Your quarterback, Jalen Milrow, was frustrated at the end there. Uh, what can a team accomplish with a competitor like him, a guy who's getting frustrated during a spring game? Yeah, I mean, he's putting the ball where it needed to be. We just got to make the plays, and that's the difference between the first part of the scrimmage and the second part is making the catches and, you know, that is hard when you're when you're putting the ball where it needs to be and, and the ball's on the ground. So, you know, it's just a matter of going back to work, you know, and that's what he does. And maybe a little frustration for a second, uh, but I know he comes back and, and uh, you know, we'll talk about learn from it. And uh, that's not just him, it's the whole group. 
All right, thank you, Coach. Congrats on uh, your first spring game with Alabama. Thank you. All right, we're going to bring in Jalen Milrow. Hey, Jalen. Hi, congratulations, you won. <laughs> um, we saw some frustration out of you at the end there. Uh, what frustrated you? How much is that attention to detail going to benefit this team this season? All it is is passion. It's passion. Wanting to, wanting to be the best version of ourselves every single time we touch a field. And the biggest thing, we want to be satisfied. We always have room to grow. We always have things to improve on, stuff like that. But the biggest thing we want to do is stack drive. Stack drive, keep getting better, come to the sideline, regroup. That's all the main focus is. Keep, you know, each drive, be attention to detail. Stuff like that. You told me your goal this season was to be the best quarterback in the country. Where do you think that you will make the biggest strides this season? What can Alabama fans expect out of you? And the biggest thing to do right now is take care of right now. Be the better of myself each and every day I enter the building, uh, play for my teammates, play for the state of Alabama, play for my family. Um, there's a lot of things I'm playing for, but the biggest thing to get to any long-term goal is take care of right now. So I have short-term goals right now um, that I need to accomplish to get to my long-term goals. How good was your running back, Jim Miller, today? That's a dog. He's a dog, man. Uh, no, I'm excited for, for the future for Jam. He comes each and every day, ready to compete, uh, working hard. Um, but I like the whole running back room as a whole. You know, they encourage Jam to play hard and encourage each other, and they have shared success. Um, but I'm super excited for Jam because he's a key resource for our team. So steaks for yourself in the offense, beans and hot dogs for the defense. How much do these bragging rights really matter this offseason? <laughs> Well, you know, it's exciting to take, you know, be here in front of our great fans. Um, but, you know, like the right, the bragging rights we talked about, you know, the biggest thing we have to do is to have fun. Have fun, enjoy the process. And along the process, you're going to have success. You're going to have success along the journey. So the biggest thing we have to do is take care of right now and trust the process. All right, enjoy that steak tonight. Thank you. Roll Tide!